Now we're going to be deriving some expectation theorems and I'm going to show you um, through some calculations how to calculate those and how to obtain some expectation theorems. Now watch very carefully guys. In question one they give us our probability distribution table and they give us the probability and the variables of it and we're going to use that to answer some questions. So we're going to start with our part A and it says find the expected value. So expected value guys you should be able to do this very very easily now. We multiply our variable by the probability in each case and then we add it together. So that's what I'm doing. 1 times 0 0.2 plus 2 times 0 0.5 plus 3 times 0 0.3 and then we add it together and you guys can just calculate that it should be 2.1. So that was fairly simple wasn't it? So that's just the method of calculating expected value. So let's do part B and I've put the answer for part A there so we can refer to that later. It's asking us to calculate expected value of 3x. So you can see this time we're still calculating expected value but we want to calculate the expected value of three times the variable. So remember these are the variables, we're going to multiply that by three, each of those, and then we're going to still keep the same procedure of calculating expected value, like this. So I'm still doing the 1 times 0 0.2, but I'm multiplying that 1 by 3, because that's what they want us to do, 3x, isn't it? So I've multiplied the variable by 3 and I still multiply it by the probability, we're still keeping that same procedure for calculating expected value. Now the next one, I'm done, I've still done 2 times 0 0.5, but I've multiplied that 2 by 3, yeah, because again it's 3x, isn't it? And then finally I'm still going to do the 3 times 0 0.3, but I'm going to multiply that by 3 as well simply because of the 3x. And then we just add it all together. Now you can just add it all together and calculate it with your calculator or something, but before we do that, I'm going to show you something a little different. I can see that 3 is common for all three, three values. So I'm going to factorize by 3. And then if I factorize by 3, I'm going to have 1 times 0.2 left, 3 times 0.5 left, and 3 times 0.3 left inside our brackets. And I hope you guys can see something familiar. This um, value inside our brackets, isn't that just the calculation of expected value, expected value of x? Because it's just 1 times 0 0.2, 2 times 0 0.5, plus 3 times 0 0.3, isn't it? So that's just our expected value. So I can say that it's 3 times our expected value of x. And we know that expected value of x is 2.1, so it's going to be 3 times 2.1, which you can calculate, it's going to be 6.3. So, now, you could have just calculated it, but through factorization, I, fa I, I can um, obtain something that looks like this. So we can say that expected value of 3 times x is same as 3 times our expected value. Now, this relates to our first expectation theorem, which is the fact that e to the, e, sorry, e to the power of e, uh, expected value of ax, where a is some constant number that we multiply to x, can just pop out the front, like here, I um, popped it out the front, and then it just becomes a times our normal expected value of x. Could you see that? So that's our first theorem. So whenever the x is multiplied by a constant, just take it out to the front as a coefficient. So that's our first uh, theorem of expectation. Please try to remember that because you're going to be using that a lot from now on when you're talking about expectation. Now let's do part C. It's asking us to find expected value of x plus 2. So this time we're adding 2 to our variable. And because these are our variables, we're going to add 2 to each case. And we're still going to keep the same procedure of calculating expectation. So you can see that to 1, I've added a 2 because it tells us to add 2, doesn't it? So I've added a 2, and then we're going to multiply by our probability as usual. <coughs> um, plus, to the 2, I'm also going to add 2 because it's asking us to do x plus 2. And then we still multiply it by the probability plus to the 3. Again, I add 2 because it's x plus 2. And then I multiply it by 0 0.3. So make, you, make sure you utilize those brackets. Now, watch what I do, guys. You can just calculate it. But before we do that, I want to show you something. Um, instead of, instead of x, um, just calculating it, what I'm going to do is a little bit of expansion. So see the this is multiplied to this. I'm going to multiply this to 1 and 2, okay? Like this, see? 1 times 0 0.2 plus 2 times 0 0.2. I'll just keep it in that bracket. And this one as well, I'm going to do the same thing. 2 times 0 0.5 and 2 times 0 0.5. 
Can you see that? I've got 2 times 0 0.5 plus 2 times 0 0.5. And then the final one, I'm going to do the same thing. 3 times 0 0.3 and then 2 times 0 0.3. I hope you guys can see that. It might be in the way. Um, but that's what I've done. Now, after I've expanded everything, I'm going to do a bit of rearrangement. So what should I do? Just watch very carefully, guys. I've got my 1 times 0 0.2. What I'm going to do now is have 2 times 0 0.5 and then I've got my 3 times 0 0.3. Basically, I've got my 1 times 0 0.2 here and then one of the 2 times 0 0.5, I've got that next to it. And then the 3 times 0 0.3, I've put that next to it. Now you can see the multiplications are all different, but it goes up by 1, 2 and then 3. Now, let's look at what's remaining. After rearranging those three out to the front, what I've got left is my 2 times 0 0.2, my 2 times 0 0.5, and my 2 times 0 0.3. So all of the second parts are left, aren't they? And hopefully, hopefully you guys can see that the common factor for each of those are 2. The 2 is the common factor. So you can see that I have factorized by 2, and then 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.3 is left. These are the ones that's left inside the brackets. Now, let's observe this. The, the reason why I wanted to do that was because now you can see that that is, must be something familiar to you guys. It's just a calculation of our expected value of x, wasn't it? 1 times 0 0.2, 2 times 0 0.5, and 3 times 0 0.3. That's just our normal expectation. So I can write that as e, um, expected value of x, ex. And then plus, hope you guys can see this as well. 2 is just 2. And then if you add 0.2 uh, plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3, that is simply 1. If you add them together, it just becomes 1. Now, hopefully you guys can see that, that those are these values. 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.3 are these values. And it definitely must be 1 because remember our rule? The probabilities must add to 1. That's one of our rules for um, discrete probability distributions, isn't it? So that's why I know that the additions of those, the sum of those, is going to be 1. So... 2 times 1 is just 2, and the expected value, we know that from part A, it was 2.1, and then when we add it together, it becomes 4.1. So that is our expected value of x plus 2. So hopefully you guys can see the relationship. I've made the expected value of x plus 2 into something like this, yeah? So I can say that expected value of x plus 2 is just our normal expectation, expected value, plus 2. So can you see that the 2 has just popped out? and then we're adding 2 to our original expected, expected value. That brings our next theorem. Expected value of x plus some constant number b, in this case it was 2. Uh, the b can just pop out, and then we can add b just to our normal expectation, the expected value of x. So that's another theorem that you must remember from now on. And can you see how I've derived that? It's pretty much the reason. So, that we've got two theorems now. Let's do another question. Part D is asking us to calculate expected value of x squared. So this time, we're, not, we're, sorry, we're squaring each of our variables and we'll keep, still keep that procedure of calculating expected value. So, you can see that I've squared the 1 and then I've multiplied by 0 0.2 plus I've squared the 2, multiplied by 0 0.5 plus I've squared the 3 and then I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.3. So we're just squaring all the variables. And this time, guys, I don't think I can do anything further. I can't really do any, any expansions or factorizations because I don't see anything common. So I'm just going to multiply and add them all up and see what I get. It's 4.9. Now, I was hoping to get some another theorem that we did, uh, that we did from B and C but for the square one, but I don't really see any relationship with our original expectation. The original expected value is 2.1. Let's try squaring that. If I try squaring 2.1, that does not give us 4.9. It's different. So there's not, there's not much of a relationship. So therefore, guys, I can just tell you that expected value of x squared is not the square of the original expectation, the expected value, which I was hoping it would be, but it's not. So therefore, that gives us our next theorem. It's not really a theorem. It's just something that I want you to remember. I'll call it a theorem, but it's something that you might want to note. Um, expected value of x squared is not equal to the expectation, the original expect, uh, expected value squared, because a lot of people tend to be mistaken with those. So here are our three main theorems. The last one is something that you should remember to take care of, um, just take caution of. 
and we'll see how we can use them for the next question. So in question two, I've put my theorems there, so you can just refer to those um, and see if you can remember them as we go. So this question, given that expected value of x is 4, we first want to calculate expected value of 3 times x. So, you can see they don't give us any distribution table or anything like that as question 1. All they give us is the fact that the expected value of x is 4, and we're just going to use that to calculate different values. So the first one's asking us to calculate expected value of 3x. So, which theorem are we going to use? We simply need to follow a right theorem, and then we can just calculate it really easily. So, hopefully guys, you can see that we're going to use the first theorem here because in front of the x, you can see that in front of the x here, the a is just our 3. So 3 is our a, the constant in front. We're going to just pop it out to the front so it becomes 3 times the expected value of x. And we know that expected value of x is 4, so put in 4 and 3 times 4 simply becomes 12. And that is it. How easy was that? So all I did was follow my first um, theorem there where we can just pop out the constant out to the front and multiply it. So let's do our part B. It's asking us to find expected value of x plus 2. Which theorem are we going to use now? Hopefully you guys can tell me. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the second one. It tells us that expected value of x plus b. The b can then just pop out like we have over here. So expected value of our x, original x and then we just plus b at the end. So in this case, b is 2. So we can just make it expected value of x plus the 2. And expected value of x is 4, as given in the question. 4 plus 2 is 6. And that is it. So very, very simple. All I did was follow my second theorem. Now, part C. This one's asking us to calculate the expected value of 2x minus 5. Now, I'm thinking we might have to use multiple theorems here. 2x minus 5, just assume that 2x is just one value. Then, we can say that expected value of some value minus 5 following the second rule. If you follow the second rule, we know that if we're adding b, we can just plot, pop the b out and make it just plus b to the expected value. If we're subtracting, it would be the same thing, guys. We'll just pop the negative 5 out and subtract it. So, therefore, it's going to be e um, expected value of 2x minus the 5. And to the expected value of 2x, using our first theorem, if there's a constant in front of our x, in this case, which is 2, the 2 can pop out as well. So see how I've popped the 2 out and I've wrote expected value of x, and then we minus the 5 to that value. So do you see that, guys? I'm neutralizing both of our theorems. Could you see that? So if you can realize that, we can all we need to do now is replace our expected value of x with 4. Put it in, guys. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 5 is 3. So 3 will be our final expected value there. Alright guys, trying to please remember these theorems for me.